Here at the Chelsea and Westminster Hospital, we use continuous spinal anaesthesia as a routine anaesthetic technique. This is the Pyunk Intralong Spinal Catheter Set. From left to right we have a 25 gauge spinal catheter which contains a guide wire and is presented on a spiral cassette. Next to this is a 21 gauge special sprot needle which is 9 centimetres long and has centimetre gradations marked on it. Beside this is a standard 2 e borst catheter connector. Next is a 1mm syringe. To the right of this is a 0.2 micron filter. And below this is a stilet which we use to incise the skin to aid the passage of the sprot needle. The sprot needle has the familiar atraumatic tip, but it has been modified to allow passage of the 25 gauge catheter in that there's a small ramp in the tip that allows the catheter to pass through the eye. The catheter contains a guide wire and this is automatically withdrawn by pulling away on the cassette. This is a 64 year old woman undergoing a total knee replacement. The um, skin has been prepped in the usual way and full aseptic precautions are being taken and the usual technique is used to identify the correct intervertebral space. So this is just the sting. First of all, the skin is anaesthetised with um, some local anaesthetic. At this point we use the stilet to make a small incision in the skin and this is to aid the passage of the atraumatic and therefore slightly blunt tip of the sprot needle. The special sprot needle is then inserted in the usual way. and we just check for CSF as we go. The CSF comes back quite briskly and it's important to replace the stilet while you get ready for the next part of the procedure. I usually put my thumb over the end just to stop any CSF leaking out while I attach the catheter here. And this is fed in rather like a central line wire The sprot needle is then withdrawn over the catheter with the guide wire still in place. And now we can pull out the guide wire simply by pulling back on the cassette. And the sprot needle is now fed over the catheter. The catheter is pulled back to leave usually three centimetres in the CSF. It's important to remember that the sprot needle here is 9 centimetres long, which is a centimetre longer than a standard 2E needle. In this case, you can actually see um, cerebrospinal fluid draining out of the tip of the catheter, but this isn't actually a, a constant finding. First of all, I inject some opioid down the catheter. Here's some diamorphine going in. And then I usually give directly the start-up dose of local anaesthetic. Here I'm using two mils of 0.5% heavy marcaine, although in a less stable patient you may want to use um, reduced or incremental doses. The 
the filter is then flushed with whatever local anaesthetic agent one is hoping to use in theatre. Um, and that will depend on the position of the patient in that if they're in a lateral position, you'd normally tend to favour plain Marcaine so that you could have your drugs float upwards. And the catheter is secured in the normal way. So after a few minutes the block can be tested in the normal way. I find that continuous spinal anaesthesia using this equipment is a straightforward and reliable regional anaesthetic technique. In some patients it has advantages over other regional techniques. One such group is patients with cardiovascular instability in that lower doses of local anaesthetic can be used and the block can be brought on more gradually. Another group which this technique is particularly suited to are patients undergoing total hip replacement in the lateral position. These spinal catheters can be used to provide very effective post-operative analgesia if an infusion is run. However, we feel that continuous spinal analgesia is only suitable in a high dependency setting and should not be used on the general wards.